Good day, everybody. Welcome to our next episode of the dissection of the human brain. Today, we shall talk about the little bit about the limbic system and its most important connection, the so-called Pape's circuit. Before that, my name is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor and Course Director of Neuroscience, and the camera person is Mr. Mark Lesser, our IT administrator. Way back in 1937, James Pappes published a book about emotions, and he postulated what is known as the Pappes circuit, because James was very passionately in favor of the role of emotions and how the limbic system played a role in emotions. Subsequently, in 1952, Maclean modified that Pappé circuit and expanded it to include two other structures, namely the amygdala and the septal area, and that came to be known as the Maclean circuit, which is actually a more comprehensive, and it deals not only with emotions, but it also deals with memory, behavior, olfaction, and many other functions. However, the National Board still believes, and the National Board of Medical Education still believes Pappé circuit is important, and the Pappé circuit nowadays is believed not only to play a role in emotions, but it also plays a role in memory. Therefore, I decided that I'm going to give you a demonstration of the components of the Pappé circuit and show it to you on a dissection of the human brain. So let's start off. The Pappé circuit starts from the hippocampus, the so-called hippocampo mammillary tract. Now, if you look very closely inside here, you will see this structure which is running on the inner surface of the, on the, inner surface of the temporal lobe. This is known as the fimbriae. What is the fimbriae? The fimbriae is actually the medially converging axons, the white matter from the hippocampus, which is located here. And if you look further closely, you'll see a serrated structure here on the inner surface of the temporal lobe. This is the dentate gyrus. So this white portion medial to that is the fimbriae, which is the axon of the hippocampus. Now these fibers of the hippocampus, they converge and posterior to the thalamus, under the splenium of corpus callosum, they form what is known as the crust of fornix. And this is the crust of fornix, which you can see here. This crust of fornix then continues around the pulvinar of the thalamus, which you can see here, and it becomes merges with the opposite side to form what is known as the body of fornix. And this is the body of fornix. Unfortunately, in this it is ruptured, but this is the body of fornix. This body of fornix then curves around and anteriorly, it splits again into two anterior columns of fornix. In this, we can see only one anterior column of fornix. This anterior column of fornix goes in front of this opening here, which is the interventricular foramen of Monroe. And you can see my probe is going right this from here into the ventricle. So the anterior column of fornix winds around in front of the interventricular foramen of Monroe and ends in this structure here, which is called the mammillary body. So therefore, this entire structure which we traced from the medial surface of the temporal lobe all the way around and came to the mammillary body, this is known as the hippocampo mammillary tract. This is the first component of the Pappé's circuit. Now let's take the next component of the Pappé's circuit. From the mammillary body, climbing fibers ascend up inside and end in the anterior nucleus of the thalamus. So this is known as the mammillothalamic tract. This is the second component of the Pappé circuit. From the, from the thal anterior nucleus of thalamus, again we have fibers which are ascending from the thalamus through the anterior limb of the internal capsule, which I'm going to show you a little later, go through the anterior limb of the internal capsule, and they end in this structure here. This is known as the cingulate gyrus. So these are the thalamocortical fibers which go through the anterior limb of the, cingulate, of the cortex, uh, internal capsule, and they end in the cingulate gyrus. This is the cingulate gyrus, which is located just above the corpus callosum here. Now what happens? From the cingulate gyrus, there are a bunch of curved fibers which are located inside the cingulate gyrus. They are known as cingulum, and I will show you the cingulum just now. Let me just reflect the cingulate gyrus. Once I reflect the cingulate gyrus, we can see under the cingulate gyrus, there are white matter here. This is the cingulum. This cingulum, it connects the cingulate gyrus, goes all the way around and connects it to the, this structure here on the medial surface of the temporal lobe, which is known as the parahippocampal gyrus. So the cingulum connects the cingulate gyrus to the, a portion of the parahippocampal gyrus, which is known as the entorhinal area of the parahippocampal gyrus. So this is the next component of the Pappé circuit. And from the entorhinal area of the, parahipp the parahippocampal gyrus, 
we have fibers which enter into the hippocampal formation which is located again where we started from and this is the hippocampal formation on our inner surface. This hippocampal formation fibers which come from the entorhinal area to the hippo hippocampus, they are by means of two pathways. One of them is known as the alveolar pathway and the other is known as the perforant pathway, the details of which are not relevant to this discussion. So this completes the Pape's circuit. Now let me tell you a few other extra points here. If you were to look at the medial and the inferior surface of the temporal lobe, we notice this portion is the occipital lobe, we shall not bother about it. Just under the calcarine sulcus, we have another sulcus here. This sulcus is known as the collateral sulcus. This collateral sulcus is the one which demarcates a portion medially, which we call just now as the parahippocampal gyrus. If we trace this collateral sulcus further anteriorly, it changes its name. Now it is known as the rhinal sulcus. Why is it called the rhinal sulcus? Because it is in relation to two important olfactory areas. One of them we mentioned just now, which I showed you here, we call it as the entorhinal area. This is actually the secondary olfactory area, Broadman area number 28. And just anterior to that, we have another olfactory area, which is the primary olfactory area, which is Broadman area 33. Therefore, this sulcus, which is an actually the continuation of the collateral sulcus, in this region it is called the rhinal sulcus. So therefore, we can see that the limbic system has got close connections with the olfactory system. And that is why MacLean included the olfaction also into the components of the Pape circuit. So therefore, to summarize, what we saw just now was the first step of the Pape circuit, namely the hippocampomammillary tract. This is the hippocampomammillary tract. I'm tracing it further. I'm tracing it all around. This is the fornix, hippocampomammillary tract running in the fornix. This is the body of the fornix, splitting into the anterior column of fornix, ending in the mammillary body here. From the mammillary body, we have the mammillothalamic tract. From the thalamus, anterior nucleus of thalamus, we have the, through the anterior limb of the internal capsule, we have the thalamocortical tract going to the cingulate gyrus. From the cingulate gyrus, we have the cingulum fibers, which connect the cingulate gyrus with the entorhinal area of the hippocampal formation. And entorhinal area of the hippocampal formation is also known as the input source. From here, the fibers go by means of the alveolar pathway and the perforant pathway, and they end in the place where we started from, namely the hippocampus here. So this is, in a nutshell, the Pape circuit. So what is the current theory about the role of Pape circuit? The current theory about the role of Pape circuit is that it is concerned not so much with emotion, it is an important component of memory consolidation, the process by which the hippocampus, by repeated rehearsal, converts or what is known as consolidates short-term memory into long-term memory. So this is the role which the Pape circuit is supposed to play. And as I mentioned earlier, MacLean has expanded this to include the amygdala and the septal area, and therefore the MacLean circuit includes not only emotion and memory, but it also includes other functions like behavior and olfaction. So this is, in a nutshell, what is the role of Pape circuit and the structures which are visible on the medial surface. If you have any questions or comments, please note them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.